morning, church. Welcome. I'm Pastor Carrie Cameron here at First United Methodist Church, beautiful Burlington, and we are so glad you're here with us. And oh, praise God, the Zoom is up. Hallelujah. It is a good day. We thought for a minute we were not going to be able to have it this morning. And so we thank God. We thank God. Um, if we can be of service to you in any way, please, please reach out to us during the week and We'd love to chat with you. Uh, today we are going to be singing God's praises for life. That's our focus today. And now I invite you to share the love and peace of Christ Jesus to one another by lifting your arms up and smiling and making faces if you need to make people laugh. Yay, amen. <clears throat> it's so good to see everybody together. And now I invite you to take a spirit of meditation, of quietness, of solitude, as we invoke the Holy Spirit to come into our presence. I invite you to take a deep breath in and a holy, sweet exhale. just allowing the spirit to calm your mind and your heart, protecting you from all that might not be good for you, and just opening up space within your body to feel God, to see God, to know God's presence is right here, right now in our midst. And for this, we are grateful and for this, we will be singing God's praises this morning. I invite you to come back, and John, our worship leader, will lead us this morning in the call to worship. Good morning. Let us join together in the call to worship. I will be singing the light print, and you will join me in the bold print. And if you would, please rise. Thank you. As we gather in this sacred moment for a sacred purpose, let us make the most of our time together. We have come to worship the Lord our God. As we sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, let us make the most of our time together. We have come to worship the Lord our God. As we respond to the melody in our hearts, let us make the most of our time together. We have come to worship the Lord our God. And now let us sing together hymn number 2040 found in the Faith We Sing hymnals, Awesome God. Would you join me in the opening prayer? Gathered around together, we give thanks for food that truly satisfies. We give thanks through the singing of psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Gathered around together, we give thanks for the gift of eternal life. 
We give thanks through the melody in our hearts and the joy in our souls. Gathered around together, we give thanks for the tune of the ages. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we will sing hymn number 2036 in the faith we sing, Give Thanks. Join me um, on Psalm 111, found in your red hymnal, uh, page 832. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who have pleasure in them. Full of honor and majesty are the works of the Lord, whose righteousness endures forever, who has caused his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. The Lord provides food for the faithful and is ever mindful of his covenant. The Lord has shown his people the power of his works by giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of the Lord's hands are faithful and just. The precepts of the Lord are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. The Lord sent redemption to his people and has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and wondrous is God's name. 
The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. The praise of the Lord endures forever. From the Gospel, I will read John chapter 6, verses 51 uh, through 58, found on pages 98 and 99 of your Pew Gospel um, Bible. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. And I will also read um, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 20. This is found on pages 194 and 195 of your pew Bible. Be careful, then, how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. As you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times, and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, John. Let us pray. O holy and loving and joyful God, we come to you today to take your word into our hearts and then to just sing praises to your glory. That is our goal for this day, and we just pray that the words of my mouth, the meditations of all of us here are acceptable to you. You who are our strength and our redeemer, amen. Today, all three of our lessons shows us in different ways how God provides. How God provides for us even today, August 18th, 2024. And also provides what we should, an answer for how we should be responding to all of God's provisions. And we heard it in praise and thanksgiving through song and melody. That's how we respond to God's provisions. Now, last week we focused on transforming ourselves from the old self into the new. And today we're going to think about ways we can accomplish that. Now, the psalmist reminded us that God has been instructing and providing for us since the beginning of time. The psalmist also reminds us that God provides food to eat when our bellies are hungry. The psalmist reminds us that God is gracious and merciful, that God shows us God's power. 
The psalmist reminds us God provides a way of redemption for his people. And finally, the psalmist reminds us that if we practice our faith, if we live our faith, if we live in God, we will gain wisdom and have a good understanding of the plan that God has for each of us in our lives. And so we keep those reminders close to heart because when we do, that's when transformation takes place. That's where we become our new selves, by remembering that God is always there instructing, that remembering that God is always providing both food for the belly and food for the soul, that if we practice our faith, if we live our faith, a new self will emerge. And that's why today we sing Alleluia, amen? Now, in the Gospel of John, we hear God providing spiritual food. Not food, the scripture said it, not food like the ancestors ate, not manna from heaven that um, had the appearance of coriander seed and tasted like honey, no. And not even food like you and I eat, fruits and vegetables, no. He was talking about food from above. Food that is different that then fills our bellies, right? Food that feeds the soul. Think about that. All the times when we might be down or discouraged, there is food for the soul that can lift you up out of that place of discouragement. But then Jesus takes it a step further. You must eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. Now we know this is where the Jews drew a line, right? And they began to dispute Christ's teaching. They were finding the idea of eating flesh and drinking blood was way beyond their comprehension. And so they began to question him. How could you possibly, right? I think if we were new to the Jesus scene, we'd be questioning too. Right? But let's stop for a minute. Let's really listen to what Christ is saying. And then let's reflect on that. What is Jesus saying to us. Now this stopping, this listening, this reflecting is really what Jesus wanted to have happen. He wanted the people that day to pay attention to the underlying message he had for them. Now, Martin Luther, theologian and preacher, describes this passage by saying this, Jesus was simply trying to get the attention of the listeners with this metaphorical language. Those who were already familiar with eating and drinking regular food certainly would recognize that what he was saying was so absurd they would hear more intently to what he was asking trying to say to them. But we know what happened. Some stopped listening and they turned their backs and walked away. But others stayed. And they began to understand that Jesus had a lot more to say than what was on the surface. And if we think about it, his entire life he had a lot more to say than what he was saying on the surface. There is a deeper meaning to every biblical narrative. Jesus wanted them to understand this this lesson by fixing their teeth into the very flesh and blood story. And he wanted them to co-mingle with him. Okay? 
It was a way to get the listeners to come with him, with this story and this language he was using. And so they stayed. They did listen. And then they understood. And how do we know that? They began to share the message with others afterwards. And this is why we sing songs of joy today, that there were those that stayed. There were those that really paid attention to what Jesus was saying. And then they went out and carried the same message to others. And if they hadn't, we would not be here today. That's why we sing today, and we say, Alleluia. This lesson also helps us to see that we are being given a glimpse of a world that is more than meets our human eye. Will Willimon, a great American theologian, bishop, and professor at Duke University, says this, about this passage. Jesus is teaching us to expect more. He is instructing us on incarnation, which embodies the deity in the flesh. Eating of the flesh is a metaphorical idea that Jesus wants us consumed with him. Consumed. Receiving Christ in this spiritual way, in receiving this kind of spiritual food, is receiving the glory of God in us, which transforms us and creates us into new people. Lastly, was Paul's letter to the Ephesians in which he tells us that God had provided the Holy Spirit, which empowers us to be disciples and these new people. And there's a sense of urgency in Paul's wor words. Why? Because he's sitting in jail as he writes this letter. And so he feels there's urgency, and so he's got to get the message to his listeners. And it's strong instruction. Don't waste time. Give thanks. Be careful how you live. Don't be foolish. And do not get drunk on wine. And the list goes on. But most importantly, Paul says, give thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So how do we respond to all these provisions that we've heard in all three lessons today? How do we respond to the actual food in our bellies, the spiritual food for our souls and salvation, and then the instructions from Paul on the proper way to live in Jesus Christ? How we give God the glory. And I tried to remember that hymn, Give God the Glory, Glory. Remember that one? I can't remember how it goes, but something like that. But Paul goes on and clearly and boldly says, by praising God. How? By singing. Singing boldly. Singing psalms, singing hymns, spiritual songs, and not singing them just to God, but singing them to each other, right? Making melody to the Lord in our hearts. That's the reason for all the praise songs today. Because we've been given everything we need to live, and we just need to let God know that. But sadly, I've been doing a lot of talk, we've all been doing a lot of talk about our community and our city lately, and not much of it seems praiseworthy, does it? It's been hard. It's been a hard month. But this lesson made me remember that God is still providing. God is still providing beauty and inspiration and hope and more if we are willing to look for it. So today we're going to focus on all the good God provides. 
And how are we going to do that? We're going to take a walk through the city together. And you don't even have to get out of your pews. There is still a generous welcome in the city of Burlington. Wave hello. There is still good work being done right here for the glory of God. I look at this and I see reflections. A reminder to always look within ourselves for the inner beauty that God has placed in each one of us. No matter how bleak life seems, new life happens. This is my new little friend I met in the park named Dakota. When we are parched, we can still find a cold soda on a hot day in the marketplace. God continues to carve out times of remembrance for old friends and fellowship and a meal. And this just happens to be Jan's reception where we gathered because we love her. Good things are still happening in Burlington. There are still artists among us painting throughout the city, but we have our own in-residence artists continuing to paint and inspire. A reminder that not all people refuse our help. After two years of working with this lady, she has her own apartment. Praise God. Our beloved neighbor, Liam, this is a beautiful rose from his rose bush. Guess when it blossomed? November. To God be the glory. We remember who's in control. People still want to give others joy. Someone leaving a happy flower for others to see in chalk. There's still time for laughter. I am sure this is Judith regaling us with her beautifully dry sense of humor or her wit. A reminder that coming together in the name of God is important. Blessings can be found if you look for them, even in a simple happy chalk cat. A good reminder that throughout history, there has always been a cry for peace, and there are still people who seek it. We thank you, Paul Hood, whoever you are, as you stood there, being a peace witness. A note from a stranger reminding us God provides, but we have instructions that we have to follow. Be kind. A good reminder that children are still worshiping, even if though there are only a few in our midst. And we thank them for giving God the glory. A sure reminder that there is still sweetness in life for all of us. 
This shows us that ice cream socials have not died out. And in fact, not only did we eat ice cream, we sold one of our first paintings out of the art gallery. This is a wonderful reminder that all people matter here in the city and that all are welcomed. This is beautiful art that if you look down in the lower right corner and you see those um, balloons, hot, hot air balloons, is a reminder to let go and to allow the wind of the Spirit to carry us. God's creations of beautiful lights and colors shimmering can also grab our attention. And when our attention is grabbed, we need to pay attention. A warm heart can still be felt as we remember that God has created some beautiful creatures. And this is a reminder that there are still people who care about God's creatures. Water left for the puppies on the sidewalk. And you get to meet new friends in Burlington. There is joy around every corner, dogs and butterflies, and artists' renderings. Why? Because art is so wonderful. And who gave the artists their gift? God. God's self did. This steeple reminding us that there are many houses of worship in Burlington and there's a strong presence of God in the city. You can still find whimsy here. I thought about buying that and bringing it home to float that flamingo. This is a great reminder to all of us that we are indeed loved, first by God and then by one another. This is profound love by Jesus Christ who offers us the spiritual food of bread and wine, our communion table where we partake together as we have been instructed. And if we forget how much we are loved and we're thinking like this sign, sometimes life stinks, the bottom part of it says, but don't worry, we got you. I'm telling you, God's got you when you're feeling like that. Old-fashioned teas, fashion shows, and fishing are not a thing of the past. Burlington is still seeking peace. Welcome to the chill zone. This is one of my favorites. Sweet friendship, I call it. A reminder that friends come to us from all walks of life in different ways. And this is my dear friend, Mike. Some of our dear friends, Mike who work at the share. He comes regularly. We've gotten to know him. He has a beautiful soul. But today, he leaves and takes off cross country. And the last thing he said to me when I saw him, he said, thanks for making it real, Pastor. I shall miss him. Good friendships are made in Burlington. 
We were called to sing melody and harmony. We find this on Church Street at Red Square. There are still DJs in the parks cutting tunes and soothing our souls. And how appropriate it was that they were set up as I was thinking about singing songs and harmony and melody to one another. Children and parents can still be found finding respite and fun on a Saturday afternoon. There is still water that refreshes, which is a wonderful reminder of the water from Jesus that restores and heals and refreshes us. A good reminder that God's instruction to sing, to play, to listen, can indeed lift the spirits. Even the teens can feel it. And finally, no matter how bad we think life is out there in the city of Burlington, there is still much fun to be had. To God be the glory. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer of response. Lord God, you have given, we have received, we give thanks and sing your praises. Amen. I invite you to stand now as you are able, and we'll be singing hymn 102 out of the Red Books, verses 1 and 3. Now thank we all our God. to be able to give in return. Our offering plates are at both entrances to the sanctuary. We no longer take up a collection. You may leave it at the door as you exit, um, or you can go up on umcburlington.com and give a one-time offering there or become a regular donor. We appreciate all your gifts. And so as the gifts are coming forward, we're going to be singing a song we've sung a couple of times. I hope you remember it. Sing it strong, sing it loud, and let us begin. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to the Lord. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah to the Lord. Sing His praise, sing His praise, sing hallelujah to the Lord. 
as we bless the offering. Accept our offerings of self and substance to accomplish what we cannot do by ourselves. So link with one another in hymns of faith that we may be a powerful influence for the good you want to accomplish through us. May all our gifts and our time be devoted to your sovereign will. In Jesus' name, amen. be in a spirit and attitude of prayer. We sing praises to your name, O Lord. We sing praises to your name. Your power and spirit, your teachings and bread, the wine you provide that lifts us, fills us, keeps us on the journey with you so much we have to be grateful for we thank you that Anna's tumors are shrinking we thank you that Steve-O is still able to continue his treatments we thank you for this congregation who continues to follow the way and the truth we thank you for the many people who use our building from different walks of life. We thank you for Pam and her dedication to the building and safety and to you, our congregation, we give great thanks and we sing praises to God's holy name. Oh God, you give us so much that brings joy to our hearts and yet we still cry out to you for those whom we love. We pray for those on the streets that they can find their way to you. We pray for those who suffer from addictions of any kind. We pray for our nation as we begin to bring in new leaders. May we remember we are one nation under God. We pray for those still suffering through illnesses, Carrie Lonergan, David Millington, Star's daughter Jessica, Carl's dad, Carl and Liz, and Phil healing from an emergency appendectomy, but loves you so much, oh God, he arrived today. Those who have been displaced in Chelsea, Massachusetts from an 18 apartment fire, those displaced in Vermont from flooding, those who are working tirelessly to help these individuals, we pray. We pray for the prayers that have not been voiced but lay deep in our hearts. And we also pray in confidence as the children of God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us join our voices singing from the Black Book 2037. I sing praises to your name.
And now can you join with me in the closing prayer? And please rise. Lord God, we sing your praises for the lives you have given us, for the food you lay at our table, for the families and friends that we have, for the beauty of all creation, for the bread we share and the wine we drink, for the love you display in most every way. We give thanks, we give thanks, we give thanks. Amen. And now, uh, could we all join together and sing hymn number 2173, found in our the faith we sing hymnals, Shine, Jesus, Shine.
and shine your own lights brightly as you walk with Jesus your Savior. Amen.